Hi, I'm Veli from Greenwood Solutions. Today's presentation is on the riveting subject of DC string fusing, usually applicable to commercial solar systems. So what is it? Where does it go? What's it all about? So what is solar DC string fusing? Effectively, it's the protection against reverse currents if there's a fault condition. And it's designed to make sure cabling is not damaged or compromised in any way. And the fusing is required when paralleling multiple strings of solar panels. Basically, solar DC string fusing is protection against reverse currents if there is a fault condition. It's there to protect the cable. Now it can be in the form of circuit breakers or DIN rail mounted slow blow fuses. It can also be inside some large three phase inverters as an option. Now fuses have three unique characteristics. They are safe. Modern fuses have extremely high braking capacities. They can withstand very high fault currents without rupturing. And fuses provide optimum component protection by keeping fault currents to a low value, they are said to be current limiting and they are a cost effective protective device for solar panels. So string fusing is located where you need to protect the string, the subarray or the full array. For more details have a look at AS5033. How do I calculate when string fusing is needed? Well, the first thing you do is you find the short circuit current of the panel in question. And in this case, it's 9.51 amps. Then you find the panel's max series fuse rating in amps, basically the reverse current rating. And in this case, it's 30 amps, really high actually. Most panels seem to have about 15 amps to 20 amps max series fuse rating. One of the examples I gave was of a Canadian um, solar panel that had a max series fuse rating of 30 amps, which is really the exception to the rule. But look, check your data sheet when you're doing your design and make sure you do your calculations correctly. Then you apply the following formula. SA minus one times the short circuit current of the module must be greater and the current mod max OCPR, which is effectively the max series fuse rating. SA is the number of parallel strings. ISC mod is the short circuit current of the module in question. In this case, 9.51 amps. And I mod max OCPR is the max fuse rating in amps, reverse current rating, as mentioned previously. So we have a panel short circuit current of 9.51 amps. We're looking to parallel three strings. This panel has a max series fuse rating of 30 amps. So the calculation is three number of strings minus one times 9.51, which gives you 19.02 amps, and this is less than 30 amps. So in this case, there's no requirement for DC string fusing. Now we have another example, another panel. It has a short circuit current of 9.79 amps. And again, we're looking to parallel three strings. But this panel has a max series fuse rating of 15 amps. So half the rating of the previous example. So the same calculation applies, three minus one, which equals two, obviously, times 9.79 equals 19.58 amps, which is greater than the 15 amp max series fuse rating. So yes to DC string fusing. It's really important to do your calculations correctly. Attention to detail, documentation. These are a couple of the things I keep on reiterating over and over again in these presentations. So check the data sheets, read the manual and you should be okay and do the correct calculations. So now what? We need to size the fuses correctly. We have to first look at AS5033 clause 3.3.5.1, yeah mouthful again, PV string overcurrent protection. IN is the rating of the fuse or the circuit breaker. IN has to be greater than 1.5 times 
the short circuit current of the module in question and IN has to be less than 2.4 times the short circuit current of the module in question. And yet another AND, IN has to be less than or equal to the mod max OCPR, which is a max series fuse rating of the panel in question. So the first example we had 30 amps and the second one was 15. Sizing of the fusing involves some simple calculations as well. So obviously there's a few steps that you have to follow. Um, and effectively, the sizing of the fuse is related to the short circuit current, obviously, the number of strings in parallel, and the max series fuse rating of the panel in question. Now we'll look at the example with a panel short circuit of 9.79 amps. So we've got three parallel strings. We've got a short circuit of the panel of 9.79 amps, so, 9.79 amps times 1.5 is 14.68 amps. So we can select 15 amp fuses and 9.79 times 2.4 is 23.5. A 15 amp fuse is less than 23.5 amps. Now the size of fuses available out there, and I'm talking about the slow blow fuses effectively are from one amp up to 30 amps. And, but really from a commercial solar perspective, you're looking at from 15, 16 and 20 amps, in some cases 30 amps. How are the fuses contained? You can use DIN rail mounted fuse holders. Some inverters have them built in as an optional extra. Can be housed in appropriately IP rated enclosure. Conclusion. Solar DC fusing is protection against reverse currents if there is a fault condition. They are located where multiple strings converge and connect. To calculate, you have to determine the number of parallel strings, subtract one and multiply by the panel short circuit current. If this exceeds the panel's max series fuse rating, string fusing is required. Then you need to determine the size of the fuse. Thanks very much for watching our presentation on DC string fusing. I hope you found it informative, interesting, and anything else. If you have any questions, inquiries, or answers, please feel free to contact us and hit that subscription button. Bye for now.